Hello everyone, this is Shatarupa and welcome to Rasayanika. So hope you all are doing well. Okay, so before I start our today's session, I just want to check, am I audible to everyone? Just type in the chat box so that I can see your comment and I can start. Am I audible to everyone? Muhammad Kalibullah Abdullah, yes ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, good evening to everybody. Good evening, Muhammad Kalibullah. Yeah. Okay, so yesterday we had our first live session on the CSIR net rapid revision round, right? So hope you all are enjoyed that. You all, all enjoyed that, right? Okay. So just to start, before starting the today's session, I want to say you something, just let me tell, tell you something that about some important books. Yesterday, some of, uh, some among you have been, have asked me that what are the basic important books for inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry and the organic chemistry that you can refer. So basically, I want to tell you this some important topics, important books, which are very, very uh, important and relevant for you, CSI and NET. Uh, first come for the inorganic chemistry, okay? So you can read the, uh, last day I, I told already, that is the R.P. Sharkar, right? R.P. Sharkar and also the AKD, that is Ashim Kumar Dash volume, volume one and volume two, AKD. These two books are very, very good and very, very helpful. All the things are very good explanation there. So you can refer this to this, uh, these two books. And apart from this, I want to say the Hui and Kitter Kitter. This book is a very small and a green book. It's like this kind of volume this uh, this has. So this is very, very important. It's, it's very, very important. If you really want to crack the CSI and net, you must, follow this hui and kitter kitter this book because kya hota hai na ki bahut sare question aise utha utha ke aise dete hai wahan se direct just direct questions are coming from that so uh, so you can read these books and apart from this for the physical chemistry i want to say that uh, basically the kel kapoor op tandon and the puri sharma pathania these three books will be very very helpful for you all all the physical concepts and everything are very good explanation are given there and also apart from this very good numerical part also very good there you can also practice uh, from those books so these books are very very helpful will be very very helpful for you all apart from this for physical chemistry like a uh, thermodynamic topic you can refer castellan book okay also for glasstone this is also an another good good book you can refer both electrochemistry and uh, the thermodynamic you can refer from those books okay and apart from this yeah for group chemistry uh, group theory yeah group theory you can refer the cotton this very very important book very good book so and for spectroscopy like you can refer uh, also banwell yeah this very good book and all those things uh, uh, apart from all those things actually those students who really want to have a very good knowledge about the quantum chemistry so they can refer i must say for them that is samuel um, that is mercury simon yeah not every i don't remember i recommend for everybody to follow this uh, mercury simon because uh, what the language somewhat is difficult there so only for those who really want to have a very good knowledge about quantum chemistry they can refer this is very very good that is mercury simon okay and lastly i can say about some uh, organic chemistry yeah if you really want to have a very good knowledge and also want to crack the csir net yeah this is very very important thing you must follow the claden claden is very important book for you all if you don't go through the claden you can crack the csir net because so many questions and concepts are very good explained there and almost directly come uh, from that books just the examples everything like we and kitter kitter in an organic just utha utha ke dete hai ekdam directly aa jate hai so it's very very important for you to follow this claden apart from this peter sykes is very good peter sykes tum follow kar sakte ho uh, for the conceptual part already, uh, conceptual part actually. So these are the few books you can refer for you, CSI chemistry, net chemistry. So let's start our today's live session. I want to start. So let's begin with our today's some question. The question number one. Okay. So the question number one, you can see that 
Among the following linear combination of atomic orbital, the correct representation of the lowest unoccupied pi molecular orbital of butadiene is. There are four wave functions given in the options and you have to answer which one is correct. So just try by yourself. This is basically, this question is basically coming from your quantum chemistry. Yes, quantum chemistry, but the topic is mainly relevant to this is, is Huckel molecular orbital theory, HMO, right? So you need to answer this question. So anyone from you who can answer this question? Okay, Papri. Yes, Daddy, you also there? Yes, ma'am. Pradeep. Okay, so first answer I am seeing here that is option B. Mohammad Kalibullah Abdu answered the option B is the correct one. Anyone else who want to try this? It's a very easy, just you don't need to mug up the total thing. You don't try to mug up all the um, uh, physical chemistry numerical part. You don't need to remember the formulas or such kind of this wave function. Just you have to follow a special trick or a special important, I can say, a concept. If you have this clearance of about this particular concept, you can answer easily these kinds of numerical question. Otherwise, you have to solve and you will take that will take very, very large time, huge time for that. Okay, Rajrupa also told that option B. Okay, so let's start with our first solution. So, yeah, look upon the question. This is mainly coming from your HMO theory, that is Huckel molecular orbital theory. Okay. So what we need to do, this is the question, the question is how to approach this kind of question. You have been given the particular compound that is butadiene. So just see the structure. What is butadiene? Okay. So butadiene means, just one minute. Yeah, this one. Okay, what's going on? What's going on? I don't know. The pen is not working, maybe. It's not working, the pen. That's the problem. Yeah. OK. Now it's visible, right? OK. So this is what the structure we have. That is butadiene, OK? CH2 double bond. CH, single bond, CH, double bond, CH2, right? Okay, so you know, all know this structure. So we have basically four pi electrons there. So what you need to do in aspects of molecular orbital, you have to think these things. So just start drawing your, in your rough, just rough, uh, rough, just rough work here. You can just use your pen or paper in this rough. You don't need to properly draw everything. Just try to draw the molecular orbitals. So let's let's start with the shy one, our first wave function for the lowest, lowest energy level. Okay. So what is the shy one? Yes, this one is shy one. It looks like this. All the four orbitals, that is P orbital is, is showing here. Okay. And all have, just look upon the orbital, all have the same sign. That is the lobe has the same sign. What is the reason behind that? Because in the ground state, you don't have any node, any nodal planes, okay? So there are no change of any plane or of, or of lobe, lobe sign. So basically all are in the same sign, that is plus, 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 okay? So now move, let's move ahead. That is shy two, our next wave function. So just, we all know, with increasing of the energy level, like starting from n equals to one to n equals to two, three to like n equals to n, 
we as, as we increase the energy level so what is the number of node changes like that it is starting from 0 to 0 1 2 3 like that is changes okay so in shy 2 we will have one node first node that is one nodal plane there yes this one is one nodal plane here so that's why the lobe always uh, changes their sign according to a nodal plane so this is if this one this this uh, load, uh, left ones have the plus sign then the right ones will have the negative sign okay okay then as you were in the same manner we can write also draw for the shy 3 that is our next energy level and also for the shy 4 that's our last energy level okay okay so in the next energy level shy 3 we will have two node this one and this one so the changes will be plus minus minus plus okay and the, again it will be like three nodal plane is there so the sign will change like plus minus plus minus are you getting my point? Am I clear to everyone? Okay. So what we need to do, we have been asked here in the list, just look up on the question. It is about the lowest unoccupied pi molecular orbital. That is LUMO. You have been asked about LUMO. Just now you need to put the four electrons, four pi electrons in the energy level. How we will put this? Just see this. That is in the first energy level, we will have the two electrons. Now next move to the next energy level we have we will also have two electrons so this one the shy 2 will be the homo that is highest occupied mo molecular orbital okay so what will be the lumo that is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital the above one that is the shy one so basically you no need, no need to remember the constant term you just only uh, have to clearly uh, uh, look upon the options and see the signs the lobe signs okay the sign is here plus minus minus plus just look upon the options it is where it is the option b yes plus minus minus plus only the option b there is given the si lobe sign is like plus minus minus plus okay and all other options just uh, do have check the slope sign just differs like is it all are different minus plus minus plus in the c is like plus plus minus minus is all are different so all you can easily cancel out the only one option is b this is the right option so you don't need to remember the constant term just don't need to try to mug up these things just follow this conceptual things if you have the clearance about this particular concept you can easily follow or approach this kind of question okay so everyone clear Okay, very good explanation, Rajrupa Ghosh. Okay, thank you Rajrupa for your valuable comment. So next move to our next question. Yeah, yeah the question is the frequency in centimeter inverse rounded of two, uh, of two, two, two decimal places for pure rotational line in the spectrum of NO molecule due to change in the quantum number from J equals to one to J equals to two, okay? And that is what, what is you need to follow, have the, uh, calculate the answer actually, the value. So given, you will be, have given the moment of inertia, that is I value here, also the Planck constants H and also the velocity of light C, okay? So which one of the following options is the correct option? Try by yourself, just try and type your option that you, you, um, you do think that that may be the correct option. Anyone is there who can try this? Am I clear to everyone? The concepts, previous concepts is clear to everyone, right? Okay, so someone is told that is option B. Mohammad Kalibullah is told that told that 6.81 centimeter inverse, that is option B. Okay. Okay, Mohammad. Thank you for your valuable comment. Rajrupa is yes. Okay. Okay, so let's start with our solution. So, how to approach this kind of question? This is basically from your uh stretching frequency equation, is this basically basically from your uh spectroscopy part of physical chemistry this equation basically okay this is a very very important topic of your uh, physical chemistry you can also read this including quantum and also the spectroscopy part is very very important okay so how to approach this kind of this kind of solution okay 
So you need to know here, it is a rotational spectrum, right? You have been already told here that is a pure rotational line. So that is rotational spectroscopy, right? So you need to know the two things here. That is the first thing, the energy. Energy of each rotational level and what the difference of the energy. So first thing you need to know that is delta E from 1 to 2. That is state 1 to state 2. Why state 1 to state 2? Because you have been said there in the equation that is J value. That is quantum number from 1 to J equals to 2. That is state 1 to state equals to state 2. Okay. So your energy value that is energy difference delta E will become from 1 to 2. And for each level the energy value. What is the equation? You all know this. That is delta E equals to B into J into j plus 1 okay now what is b b is rotational constant and g is the quantum number you all know the state which uh, defines mainly the set of uh, the, the energy level actually okay so put the value j instead of j the 2 and 1 so what will we get okay so b into 2 into 2 plus 1 this is for first one, the state 2j equals to 2 and this subtracting that the value from it, the next value is for one state. That is b into 1 into 1 plus 1, right? And you will be getting the value is 4b like that. Just remember one thing, the unit that is joule. Always the formula gives us the value in joule. But just look upon the our question there you have been asked all the options are in centimeter inverse, right? It's CGS unit. So you need to convert this first. So a student often do one thing actually, they just calculate, but they forgot to check the, uh, the unit, what is uh, what has been asked in the equation, that these are the mainly things that they will often do mistake in the examination, okay? So you need to careful about the unit part also. So you need to convert this joule to centimeter inverse. Now how it will be possible? So before going to that, we need to know what is the B, B formula. So B basically, B equals to H square into 8 by, divided by 8 pi square I joules, okay? I is the moment of inertia you have been given and H is the Planck's constant. This is the basically formula. And if we divide this B term by the HC term, HC, this term, if we divide this, we will get H by 8 pi square IC. Okay, so you can readily solve this by putting the formula and you will get the unit that comes for this is centimeter inverse in terms of centimeter inverse. Okay, when we divide the B term by the HC term, it will readily convert it into convert in, converts into, to, into what? That centimeter inverse. Okay, now what is the basic concept behind this? How it comes? You know all the thing basically the delta E we know you all know this function from your basic 11 12 level I know that is HC nu bar that is the nu bar is the frequency or the wave number that is delta E equals to HC nu bar you all know that and when we divide this delta E that is energy difference by the HC term okay we will get the nu bar okay so that is the nu bar what is this is the, well, the centimeter inverse in this unit. Okay, so basically this concept is applied here, then thus we will get here the centimeter inverse in the unit term. Okay, so now we need to follow, we need to calculate this. So basically you have to follow the formula and just put the, uh, the, uh, the things. So delta E from 1 to 2 state divided by HC. You will get what you already have given, uh, you got the 4B value, divide that by the HC part and you will get 4 into B by HC just before few things like h by 8 pi square ic okay so just this thing and you will get the 6.81.36 meter inverse okay so yeah yeah you will get this 6.81 681.36 centimeter meter inverse. Why this is meter inverse? Before, because if you put the value of H that is given in the option, in the given equation actually, in joule second, that is the SI unit, right? And also the uh, moment of inertia, kg meter square. So also is the SI unit. So all the terms are SI units. So by putting those, you will get at first in a meter inverse. Now you need to convert it to centimeter inverse. So you all know that one meter inverse equals to 10 to the power minus two centimeter inverse. You, you all know this conversion. So you need to convert this must. Otherwise it will be going to wrong answer for you. 
So the correct option will be 6.81. Muhammad Kalimullah, you were where the you were answered the correct answer. Okay, 6.81 centimeter letters. This is the correct action. Sir. Look the uh, upon the options. So the teachers often do one thing that uh, CSI had actually. They often do one thing. They try to make you confuse between the units. There are also given 681.00 in the unit in the option one centimeter inverse, right? Well, student will always become confused with these options. Okay, so just careful about the unit part. Okay, this is the two option two will be the correct option. Am I clear to everyone? Trick is very nice. Thank you, Muhammad. Rajupa, nice trick. Thank you, Rajupa. Hope you all are enjoying the session. That means you all have a very good preparation. So just keep going this like this. So next move to our next question. Okay, so this question is from your first law of thermodynamics and often you will be given such like of uh, diagram and you have to calculate some things like that. So the question is one mole of a perfect monoatomic gas is put through the cycle shown in the figure. The total work in joule done during the cycle is you need to follow as a total work done during the cycle A, B, C, D. Okay, and there are so many options. What will the correct option? Anyone try to answer this? Just type the, your answer in the comment box. Anyone, anyone from you would like to answer this question? This is a very, very important question. It's from this type kind of question. Actually, NTA or CSI or whatever they prefer actually to give this kind of diagrammetric question in the examination. So once uh, you just go through about all the concepts of each and every type chapter, you must practice, just keep practicing the numerical part, okay? Okay, so let's move to with our, uh, move with our next slide and with the solution. Now, how will so how can we solve, solve this type of long solution uh, problem, numerical problems in during our examination? So just uh, look up on our diagram. At first, you need to do that. Just put down the coordination part of each of every point. Okay, so it will be very easy for you to calculate. So there are the P and V term in the Y axis. So there is P in bar and the x axis given the volume value okay so just at first find the coordination coordinate coordinates of the points okay so now move to a to b the process the process a to b when we move from a to b cycle if to be process what is the process will be they just look upon the our value and the uh, diagram properly the volume is increased right it is from 23.24 to 46.48 something like that but the fact is pressure is kept constant too, right? Two bar. So this is nothing but it's isobaric expansion. Isobaric expansion this is. Okay. Yeah. This is isobaric expansion. So you all know the equate the formula for the isobaric expansion, the work done formula for the isobaric expansion. This is W of AB that is minus PDP. We all know that. Just uh, well, put the value P is my 2 and the volume this V2 minus V1 and just calculate the value and it comes around, around like that. Okay, so next the BC process. Now you also can see that the volume is increased but the pre pressure is not also kept constant and you don't need, uh, know the process is what type of process. This is expansion you know but you can't understand that it is isobaric, isothermal. What is this? You don't know about much information you don't have. So just you need to follow a simple trick. I'm going to tell you here, just uh, uh, look this and listen this carefully, okay? So when you are going through such process, how to approach this kind of things? Just look upon the coordinates, that is B point and the C point. Just look that if you multiply the B point value, that is P and V value in the B, in the B point, multiply this and you will get the value just, uh, equal to the C in this point C. Multiply this 92.96 into 1. That is 92.96, right? P and V term in the C point. And in the B point also 46.48 into 2, just multiply this, you will get this value. 
So what is going to happen here? This is in the B to C process. Basically, it's nothing but PV is kept constant. PV equals to constant. That is P1, V1 equals to P2, V2. Now, what is this? This is nothing but your Boyle's law. You all know this. This is Boyle's law. So basically, B to C term, the, foil, the, the process actually follows the Boyle's law. And so you all know that the Boyle's law means the time PV equals to constant means RT term is constant, right? So temperature is kept constant here. So this is an isothermal expansion case. This is an isothermal expansion. The process expansion is what kind of expansion? The isothermal expansion. So now you know the formula. The, for the work done, the isothermal expansion is B, uh, WBC. It is minus NRT ln V2 by V1. Okay, that is volume 2 by volume 1. And now you need to know the temperature term. You don't have the value. Now you need to find this. Just find this. Pick up any of the point for B or C. Both have the same temperature because the temperature remains constant there. Because this is isothermal process, right? So just for any of the point, just put down the PV and T, uh, PV value there. That is PV equals to RT, ideal gas equation. So PV equals to R2 gas from this, putting the pressure and value and, we have, uh, and volume value and also the R value, that is uh, your um, gas constant, and you will get the T value, okay? The T term that comes probably like 1120 Kelvin, okay? So now put the value and you can get your answer for the BC value, W. Now, next for the CD process. CD is expand, not expansion, it is compression process, right? And also it is again isobaric compression, right? Isobaric compression. So again, you need to find like the same using the same problem formula that is minus PDV and P is 1 and V is V2 minus V1. Just do this thing. And the DA term, DA process, the path DA. Look, the volume is kept constant here. So basically neither expansion nor uh, compression is going to happen here. So volume is not changed. That means you know that is the W with the work done is zero here. That is minus P dV, minus P delta V. Volume is not changed. So it is zero term, right? This term is zero. So you will get zero value. So just add this value and you will get WAB plus WBC plus WCD plus WDA, you will get minus 4183 Joule. Okay, so you will get in the term of at first the liter bar because you have been given this term. The, all the units are liter bar in the unit, right? So just multiply by 100 because you have been given also the information in the equation. Just multiply by 100, you will get your answer. In Joule, also don't forget to convert it into Joule. Otherwise, you will get wrong answer, okay? Okay, so your correct option will be minus 4183. That means this, option B. Am I clear to everyone? Mahmoud Kalkar, hello ma'am. Thermodynamics is very hard. Actually, peer students think that the physical part is very hard because so many numerical part is there, right? But you must remember one thing in the CSI exam examination. If you follow few years back question, you will get minimum 40 40 percent or 40 40 40 around marks actually a large huge number coverage from that comes from the physical chemistry and also a lot of question coming from the thermodynamics. Yeah, it will. It seems too hard to you, but I will say if you have a very good concept. Just try to clear every each and every concept of each of every topic. When you read this, uh, try to follow very good books, good books to uh, make you strong your uh, concept and keep practicing. Um, if you readily keep practicing your um, always your um, numerical part will develop. Okay, so it will help you. I will say this because you can't uh, you can't skip this physical part. Otherwise, you can't crack. Uh, you need to cover very, very important parts from there. I will, uh, next class, I will discuss you some important topic from each and every part. Uh, so for today, I will say, so am I clear to everyone? This, this point is, you are uh, also getting my point, right? Okay. Should know fact and concept very well. Yes, you know, you should know the fact and concept very well first. Okay, so next, move to our next question. Yeah. That is our question number four. So this is basically from the electrochemistry, another important part of physical chemistry. For the electrochemical cell, a given there is an electrochemical cell, 
The junction potential is the highest when M plus is. That is, you have been asked here, the junction potential will be highest when? When the cation, that is the ion here, will mean basically moves. That is the M plus means the cation. What kind of, um, for the what kind of cation, the junction potential will be the highest value? Anyone want to answer this question? Just type your answer in the comment box so that it will be visible. It's a very easy trick actually. If you have the clearance about the uh, concept, you can definitely answer this question. You don't need to remember these things Thank there, there. It's basically from electrochemistry and you need to just have a very good uh, concept of each and every topic. Anyone is Li plus, Muhammad Kalibullah. Okay, your answer is Li plus, that is option two. Anyone else? Okay. New one is there. Piba one Risa. Okay. Option three, that is Na plus. Okay, we are getting Orgo Deep H plus, that is hydrogen. Option one. So we are getting so many answers from you. Option A, also uh, someone answering. Option B, option three. And anyone else? Okay, so. So uh, let's try to solve this. How, how we will approach this? Just look up on the question, the, uh, look up on the cell actually, given cell. There is AgCl kept in both sides, that is the same, um, we, will, we can say that the same uh, electrolyte is used here, okay? Same kind of electrolyte is used for the whole cell. So this is nothing but a concentration cell. You need to know first that the concentration cell. So what is the concentration cell? When uh, a concentration cell means the two cells are connected to each other, but with the same electro um, using electrolyte uh, or the same solution we are using uh, in that, but in different concentration, okay? So that is called the concentration cell. And for th this purpose, what happened? A potential generated that is called the liquid junction potential and for which the ions basically starts to move, starts moving, okay, okay? So the moving of ions, so basically you need to know one thing that is liquid junction potential here that is the formula, that is concentration formula which is mainly defined the liquid junction potential or the JP value. That is mainly T plus includes the T plus that is transport number into RT by NF where F is the Faraday number, N is the number of electron uh, that, are, uh, that are mainly transferred that's taking part to particular uh, equation, oxidation or reduction. And into ln activity of cell two by cell one, okay? So this is basically our formula. You must need to uh, remember this kinds of formula. But the fact is, uh, you don't need to calculate anything here. Just need to remember this formula. And from this, we can infer that the JP, that is the liquid junction potential value actually, directly proportional with our Transport number. Why? Because all these terms are constant. RT by NF all are constant. Uh, it's activity term, everything are constant term. So we can easily write that JP is directly proportional to what? Transport number for the cation here. So you need to consider now one thing that's transport number. Now you need to know what transport number, uh, to consider transport number, the mobility of uh, the char the, of the ion. Mobility means how, uh, in how velocity, how much, in how much speed the ion moves from one cell to another. So basically, mobility depends on two factors. That is the charge of the ion and the size of the ion. Okay, charge of the ion and the size of the ion. So uh, mobility is directly proportional with the charge and inversely proportional with the size. So as we, we can see, there's a size decreases, the mobility of the ion will be increased. The size decreases, they can move easily, okay? So here, just see the option and only the H plus has the lowest size. It will have the maximum velocity or the mobility. So we'll have the maximum transport number. Eventually, it will increase the liquid junction potential value, okay? 
So the option one, A one, or the A option or the one option will be the correct option. So whoever have given the option one will be the correct option. Chandani Patil, option four. No, it's not option four. It's option one, dear. Dinesh Bana, hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Okay, so hello, everyone. So let's move to our next question. Okay, so this question is the correct order of basicity of the following anions. This is basically from your GOC, that is general organic chemistry. Okay, so the question is there is given four molecules and you have to uh, answer this question. Which one is correct? The correct order of basicity actually. So what is the correct answer? Thanks for the explanation, Rajrupa. Thank you, Rajrupa. Uh, hope it will it becomes a very very helpful for you all. Okay, so next this question answer this. Try this. Try to answer this question. Anyone who wants to try this, Mohammed Kalibulla. C is the least basic. C okay. He told that C is the least basic. So what is the order, correct option? Which one will, uh, will be the correct uh, order option actually? Because the three nitro group reduces the basicity. Rajrupa is also going to tell that is three. Mohammed Kalbi is four. Okay, so there are lots of answer coming from the students. Okay, so let's try to solve this kind of question. Okay, so you need to remember one thing this kinds of question how to approach this basically you need to know that basicity is indirectly proportional to what the stability of carbon ion as the stability of carbon ion increases basicity will eventually decreases okay so if the uh, if we get that is a, a carbon ion is very much stabilized so we should think that the, that carbon ion, that means which represents the particular base, will be the least basic. Okay, this is basically our relation. We need to remember these things. Okay, so here just look upon our molecules. It's trinitro, uh, trinitro. It's phenoxide, like right? this kinds of molecule. So what is this thing? Here the O minus will take part in the conjugation with the benzene ring. Okay. Also, the NO2 groups have the minus R effect. That is minus resonance effect. It can draw, withdraw the electron towards itself. So this molecule will be stabilized very, very high in order. Okay. After that, the molecule, this one, that is uh, D. Okay. So D, D1. So look upon this molecule. There is only one Na2 and the fact is the O- minus is also taking part in the conjugation with the carboxyl group C double O, C double bond oxygen. that is meant C double O minus this is carboxylic group and C double bond o is a keto group. Okay, so it's also taking part in the conjugation with this. So and also with the uh, benzene ring also. So basically there is nothing but a cross conjugation part system is going up. So it's less, uh, less stable than this previous molecule. And now look upon these two molecules. These are uh, aliphatic, right? This is, uh, these are aliphatic, aromatic and this is aliphatic compounds. So what is the same kind of conjugation is taking part both for both molecule, but the difference only difference is the functional group, NO2 and cyanide, CN, okay? So you need to know one thing here, the electron withdrawing effect, electron withdrawing, which have the group have the higher electron with, uh, withdrawing capability. So NO2 have the higher electron withdrawing capability than the cyanide group. So basically it will be stabilized more than this one. Okay. So basically the stability of anion order will be C greater than D greater than A greater than B. So the basicity order will be just reverse of that, just reverse of that. So it will be B greater than A greater than D greater than C. Okay, so our answer is option D4. Yeah, who have already answered the option? What is the correct option? Dinesh Bana, option one. No, Dinesh, it is option four is the correct option. Basicity depends on the electronegativity. Obviously, electronegativity and also it depends on the uh, inversely proportional with the stability of the carbon ion. Okay, so you all are getting my point, right? So let's move to our next question. 
Okay, so before going to the next question, I would like to say that we are going to start our new batch that is for the chemical CSI and net coaching for chemical sciences and new batch batch start on the 4th March 2022. Okay, so we will be providing their exam focused daily classes, some printed hard copy study materials, unlimited expert assistance and doubt solving via chat, class tests, monthly practice exams, all India level test series, video backups of all classes and much, much more things you will be provided there. So you can join this, our classes that will start from 4th March 2022 for your next upcoming chemical CSI year net. Okay, chemical science. Okay, so you can also inform us in the visit or call our the toll free number given the below and also can contact uh, Surasha Anika team. Okay, okay. So next, uh, let's move to our next question that is, the correct order of rate of solvolysis in 80% ethanol at 25 degrees Celsius. You have been given three molecules here, you can see. So in 25 degrees Celsius, what is the uh, rate of solvolysis? Okay, in 80% ethanol solvent, solvent actually. So which is the correct option here? Anyone would like to try this? Option four. Okay, Abid Ami is told that option four. Mohammad Kalibulla is CBO, oh, it's before answer. Okay. Anyone would like to try this? It's a very, very conceptual thing. Mainly that is also in another question of organic chemistry actually. And it is mainly a basic, actually basic part of your organic chemistry. So anyone would like to answer this? Okay, so let's move our, move to our solution. Just look up on the molecules. All have a bromine attached to the bridge head position, like there. So what is going to happen here? In the 80% ethanol solution, just nothing but just all the bromine atoms will leave from the molecule, okay? So we will get a carbocationic intermediate for all the molecule, that is SN1 solvolysis. It's a, definitely it's a basic uh, example for the SN1 solvolysis, you all know that, substitution reaction, SN1 solvolysis. And we will get readily the carbocation in the bridgehead position, okay? So now you need to consider the stability of carbocation, okay? So rate of solvolysis is directly proportional to stability of carbocation. With increasing the stability of carbocation, we will get higher rate of our solvolysis, okay? So as the ring size increases, Okay, we know that as the ring size increases, the stability of carbocation will eventually increase. For what? Only the, because the with increase of the ring size, there the percentage of S, square, S character will increase. We all know these things. So you need to consider this particular concepts and you need to remember this particular concepts. With increasing the ring size, actually, the increasing the ring size, what's going to happen? The percentage of S character will increase. So what happened? So it will also gives the uh, stability of carbocation, okay? So here see the molecule, the C molecule. The molecule C has the largest ring size, so the largest stability of the carbocation, okay? Then it comes for the A, the next uh, number of ring here. So that is, uh, uh, it is lower uh, carbon atom present than the C1. And after that, the B. Okay. So the ring size decreased. So stability decreases. So we can say that the our stability order, correct order. What is the correct order here? It is C greater than A greater than B. That is option number four. This one. This is our correct option. So we will have this correct option or solvolysis rate in these terms. Am I clear to everyone? Are you all getting my point? Number of Bridget carbon increases, stability of carbon uh, carbocation increases. Yes, Mohammed, you are absolutely right. Uh, this concept actually we will we are applied here. Okay. Okay. So next question. Okay, so our next question is the correct order of metal carbon distance. You have given so many molecules here that is mainly coming from your organometallic. This is a, another very, very important topic for your uh, inorganic chemistry. That is organometallic, okay? So the correct order of metal carbon distance is what? You have been given so many complexes. Basically, these are ferrocene, cobaltocene, and nickel, nickelocene, right? 
uh, you all know the structure that is both uh, the five membered ring are attached with the metal centered iron in between them either iron or either cobalt or nickel that is ferrocene uh, cobalt to sin and nickelocene so just look up on the options and just say which is the correct option the metal carbon bond distance order dinesh bana yes ma'am okay yes ma'am clear or gudeep option 4 okay so he is you are you saying for this particular equation or gudeep so your answer is option 4 okay so this one okay hamad also told that option 4 anyone from you would like to answer this question ferrocene is 18 electron compound yeah ferrocene is 18 electron compound so okay let's move to our solution how to approach this kinds of equation this kinds of solution so look you don't read to remember or mark up this kinds of thing that's which molecule will follow the eternal rule or not you don't need to do, do, do this just you should have a very good clear concept and just follow a simple trick here i am going to tell here a very very simple trick just you need to remember this so that you can approach the uh, particular equation in your examination time okay so how we will solve so solve this let's see yeah our correct option will be the answer four that is this one that is this order will be the correct option so why now look upon our molecules if you want to know about this particular concept so you need to consider first thing that is it's mainly from molecular orbi orbital theory mot okay so you need to know one thing with the increase of the unpaired electron, with the increase of the unpaired electron in the metal center, what is going to happen? The metal carbon bond also will increase. Okay. So metal carbon bond, so if the number of the unpaired electron increases, that will also increases the metal carbon bond length. Okay. So for these things, just try to uh, getting out the particular uh, un unpaired electron for each case. So for first example, nickelocene, we have, we all know that there is the, we all nickel for nickel, we have the D8 electrons, the eight electrons, right? So how we will put in the electrons? We all know how the D orbital split it. Like this, the lowest orbital will be Dx square minus Y square and D X Y, right? Then you will get the dz square and above all, you will have the dxz and dyz. Okay, this is how the d orbital splitted for these molecules, the particular this. So now we'll try to put the eight electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For nickel, you have two unpaired electrons, right? Okay, so this two unpaired electrons. Okay. Okay. So now for the cobaltocene, there are D7. So seven electrons, how we will put it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Only one unpaired electron. And for ferrocene, we will have D6, that is six unpaired electron is there. So you will have only this, no unpaired electron remain there. Okay, so zero. So now you know that with increase of unpaired electron, number of unpaired electron, you will have uh, increased, uh, you can see the increased order of metal carbon bond length. So yeah, you will have this order. Actually nickel have the maximum, then cobalt, then ferrocene. Okay, so number four will be the correct option. Are you getting my point? Periodically defined. Anyone else? Are you all uh, getting my point? This was this answer of basically the logic behind this particular question. Okay. So let's move to our next question. Yeah. The species for which the shapes or geometry can be predicted by VSEPL theory is or are. So basically this question is asked from your VSEPL theory. So you need to consider the geometry and so if that you can, you will, uh, uh, um, you will answer this question. So anyone would like to answer this question? 
Hamad Kalkar is told, told that yes, ma'am. Okay, Hamad, stay tuned. Just try to answer this question. Okay, so we don't have much time, so we need to solve this question. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the actual answer. So the our answer, correct answer will be the C. That is three. That is PF three and SF six. This one. So why? Just look upon our molecules in the options. Okay. So at first we have been given that platinum tetrachloride PtCl four two minus this complex. So uh, you all know that the platinum tetrachloride is is such such kind of structure of molecule. We can't uh, find the structure for by following the VSPO theory, right? You can only it's a coordination compound. Actually, this is a coordination compound. So we you can't find the structure from the VSPO theory. You need to follow VBT, that is valence bond theory. Okay, you need uh, you can't uh, draw the structure from this uh, for this particular complex. This is because this is coordination compound. So you can easily cancel this option. Now you will have option B and C. So now look for the option B. So if you all know that about these things that. Uh, if when you all uh, read the VSPO theory, you all know that there are some exceptions, right? So this is basically the one and the one among those ex exception examples. That is uh, TeCl six two minus. You all know about this example. So VSPO can't predict the structure properly from that. So if you uh, try to solve the or the structure for the TCl62 minus in terms of VSPO what we will going to have what is going to happen so this is basically an identical octahedral why because you have six ligands so six electrons you need to uh, consider and also two again that is total eight electrons right in terms of VSPO just try to find out this you have eight electrons okay so you need to have the six chlorine atom to bind with the central metal atom that is tell tellurium okay so that is you can for put the electrons like that's one two three four five six and all the six are there and also you will have two electrons pair there this is and electron pair is uh, remain there in the s orbital and that is what is the stereochemically inactive lone pair this is remain in our structure that is as the lone pair but the stereochemically inactive because that doesn't uh, take part in the uh, bonding or the structure formation so you will get the hybridization practically that is p3d3 only the p and d orbital will take part in the hybridization or the bonding not the s orbital this because this lone pair is stereochemically inactive lone pair okay so the our uh, hybridization will be like that so you can't predict from VACP theory properly this uh, this molecule. Okay, so this is our now you have only option C that is PF three and SF six remaining, and this is going to be our correct option. Now you all know that the VACP in, in terms of VACP uh, you can easily find the structure for PF three and SF six. Okay, so am I clear to everyone? Which reference book is best for coordination as CSI and NET is concerned? Hui and Kitter Kitter is book is very, very good for all the things if inorganic, I would like to say for all that is bioinorganic, coordination chemistry, organometallic, everything, mechanisms of inorganic like um, uh, uh, there are some things like uh, you have solvent chemistry, everything is very, very explained there. So you can follow refer this book, okay? And which one for part one logical reasoning? This this is this will also help you for those things. Okay, okay. So next one, our next question is, yeah, the molar conductivity of zero point zero zero nine molar aqueous solution of a weak acid HA weak acid is zero point zero zero five centimeter uh, Siemens inverse Siemens square mid moles inverse and the limiting molar conductivity of HA is zero point zero five. Siemens square mole inverse at 298 Kelvin. So assuming activity coefficients to be unity, the acid dissociation constant Ka of HA at this temperature is. You have to answer this particular question. Now, anyone would like to try this? GI book, can someone, what? Which book? Okay, you are talking about the part A section. That is mainly come from uh, mainly for the uh, 
you if you have a basic basic 9 10 or 11 12 concept of your basic mathematics and physics and all these things you can easily uh, answer those part you should start from uh, the section c and then come to section b and after that you will try to answer the part a actually okay so what is the solution for this question let's uh, just try to solve this you have given the lm uh, the lambda value that is the limiting molar conductivity and a particular temperature that a molar conduct and conductivity also so you have now lambda m a lambda uh, infinity value that is limiting condition and um, also the in a particular temperature the value and you also have the concentration that is 0 0.009 molar so let's find just you need to remember one thing you need to first find the degree of dissociation how you will answer this type of question it's from an equilibrium equation of conductance right so you need to find first the degree of dissociation that is alpha so how you can find that alpha or degree of dissociation that is equals to lambda infinity divided by lambda m that is particular uh, solvent or that particular temperature for particular concentration so just divide these things and you will get uh, here 0.1 the value after that what you need to do you will need to consider you need to answer the ka value that is dissociation constant that is equilibrium value so how the weak acid dissociated in the equilibrium you all know that ha2 h plus that and a minus okay and for the weak acid how 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 we need to represent that in terms of um, considering the dissociation cons uh, or the degree of dissociation okay so for h it will become c into 1 minus alpha for h plus we will get c alpha and for a minus we will get c alpha we all know that basically the basic uh, kinetics or the basic equilibrium part you all know these things so from this equation you will get the ka equilibrium constant term that is ka equals to the product that is h plus concentration of h plus into concentration of a minus divided by concentration of h a value so just put down the value that is alpha c alpha c and divided by 1 minus alpha c um, uh, 1 minus sorry 1 minus alpha into c so just cancel out the c and you will get the alpha square c by 1 minus alpha just put down the value and you will get the answer 10 to the power minus 4 will be our answer so basically option a will be our correct option so am I clear to everyone? This is very pretty simple question. Just you need to just remember this few things of basic concepts. Okay, ma'am, coordination wali. Not heard properly. Which I just told about the uh, inorganic chemistry book. Okay, it's Hui and Kitter Kitter. You can follow those things. The coordination part is very well defined there okay okay so next question that is our last question mainly and this is mainly from your stereochemistry part so there are so many com question coming are coming from the stereochemistry part you know you should not skip th those part okay from stereochemistry so the question is the absolute configuration at the two chiral centers in d ribulose this is the structure of d ribulose and just you need to find the uh, configuration of the carbon atoms and which mainly the three and four carbon okay so what is going to be anyone would like to answer this question hui and kitter kitter just uh, search into the in the google hui and kitter kitter you will definitely get the inorganic book that is a green color book you will also get it in amazon or any other stores but uh, here in rasayanika also you in the stores in uh, we are providing yeah, there you can follow follow the also the books or sub materials you can find there also okay it's a very good book hui and kitter kitter is very important book you should know this uh, all you should know this because uh, uh, it is very important because very very que important question are directly coming from those things you need to read all the concepts from the from those uh, this book actually okay so option b uh, Fever one sir one Risa okay so unhe bala sorry I am not properly uh, uttering your uh, your name so option B is the correct option she told or he um maybe huh okay told okay so three R four R so basically what would be the correct option 
just look upon the molecule and just try to numbering okay so you need to numbering just first uh, these things and uh, you all know you need to follow the priority rule right that is a cip priority rule you all know that sabha we are knowing about that that is the kan ingold ingold prelog law kan ingold prelog law okay the cip priority rule so according following that particular rule you can answer this question so basically for carbon 3 actually the priority one will be oh then the priority will be this and then this after that the hydrogen okay so the it is going to be like rotate this anti clockwise right so it is going to be s and similarly for four if you follow the same trick you will get again the s so basically you will get 3s 4s configuration for this particular uh, question okay the so 3s 4s means option number d who answered option d is the correct option hari krishna rangoli d yeah it's the correct option is d hari krishna yeah option d is the correct option that is the correct configuration is 3s 4s both are s configuration the same configuration okay so these are our some important question which are very very relevant for you csi and net examination and hope you all are preparing this uh, this this type of question just follow our channel every day we are going to discuss so many important type of question and some in topics every day which are very very important for you csi and net uh, so just follow and just keep going and preparing yourself okay so this is what our today's session hope you all enjoyed this you all are getting my point right please show me the last slide uh this one right mohammad this is our last slide how we have uh answered this question that is 3s and 4s okay so if you have a basic idea of the cip rule that is kan ingold prelog law that is priority law you can definitely answer this kind of question okay lot of question you can answer stereochemistry so just i would say i would like to say just follow the basic rule you can refer the peter sykes also very good explanation is there for the stereochemistry but also for not on peter sykes also from nasipuri is very good book for the stereochemistry part very very good book is for stereo chemistry part you can refer this book and all the from uh, all the detail in uh, the rule and the examples are given there you can follow those things and practice those things okay so this is what i need to say today okay so hope you all enjoyed our session so just keep practicing and keep uh, preparing you for your exam so thank you very very much